So yeah, I'm Asan Kabe Singer, uh, Chief uh, Evangelist at WSO2. I've uh, been in the industry for around 20 years. So my job at WSO2 to tell the WSO2 story. While telling the story, I uh, provide strategic consulting for key customers uh, across the world. Uh, so that's what I do. So today, basically, uh, this is the journey that I'm planning to take you through. Uh, so how you can create seamless access experiences with Digital Double. I think you listen to a deep uh, uh, security discussion uh, prior to this uh, session. So this is not going to be a deep uh, technical session, but uh, something that uh, really valuable in the today uh, digital economy as well as as an application architect or a, um, a person who's building digital experiences for end users. So before getting there, let's look at the current uh, landscape. Uh, what's really happening in the world. So we started uh, uh, the uh, application development with uh, monolithical applications and moved to web. Uh, today we are in the uh, mobile and uh, the wearables, but the uh, world is moving with uh, Metaverse and Web3.0. Uh, so Metaverse was kind of, uh, uh, um, it was there in the horizon, but it has become a reality today not only social media and um, the gaming industry, even uh, other industries are uh, kind of um, uh, looking at metaverse, especially like web meetings and um, the shopping experiences, even Nordstrom is experiencing uh, with the metaverse. So it has become a reality and uh, going to be a, a huge part in the identity space as well as general application development. The second dimension of this um, uh, a diagram basically, organizations are going through a step-by-step -step process through digitization, digitalization, and digital transformation. So uh, during the digitization, they start uh, moving from analog to digital, and then during the digitization, they start connecting the system. So that's where different type of security standards, integration standards, API standards coming into the picture. During the digital transformation stage, they start building digital experiences. That's where the application development coming on top of the two layers that they have created. So that's what's really happening inside the organization. But from the business point of view, there's a, another change happening. We used to provide services for our customers, but now people don't buy services, they buy the experiences. Uh, so when two people providing the same service, they go with the uh, person who's providing a better experience. I think the one example is FedEx versus UPS, both providing the same experience, but sometimes people pick one over the other based on the experience that they are providing. That's where the experience economy is, um, um, uh, is the key at the moment in the industry. So that's where the personalization coming into the picture because personalization is the DNA for providing a better digital experience because every uh, person is looking for a personalized experience, a geosensitive experience, and um, a predictive as well as real-time experience. So that's where we have to focus on the personalization. All the digital uh, native companies, so the digital giants in the world, they are utilizing personalization. So I pick few examples. So best example is Netflix. So based on the personalization, the preview of a specific uh, film or a TV show will differ. So I pick this example as Stranger Things. Based on their preferences, their social profiles, what they do in the, uh, uh, the uh, world of internet, uh, you will see a different type of a preview based on their so that is one example. And Disney is another good example. They give you a personalized holiday plan based on your activities in the internet. Then Apple utilizing it uh, to the next level. They provide various um, uh, activities based on your preferences as well. So this is how these digital giants are utilizing personalization in the world. So, how these two connected, identity and the personality. So identity basically provide who you are. 
but it doesn't say what exactly uh, your personality. And personality comes with the, uh, your sense of humor and then emotions and how you interact in various applications. So that's how uh, the personality comes. And those, are, those two are interconnected, but unfortunately, most of the systems, they know your identity because it's stored already in the systems, but they don't know your personality because those two are not interconnected. So that's where we have a gap in the application development, and that's where we are trying to find a solution for this problem. So this uh, quote that I took, uh, that kind of explaining how the identity and the personality interconnected and how uh, compensation each other with different type of uh, capabilities. So today, the CIM world is mostly about access control and uh, standards about access control, how you implement those standards and provide capabilities around uh, those access control related stuff. But as a technology provider, we believe the future of CIAM is moving towards this personalization as well as how an organization can utilize personality in their business through uh, the CIAM framework. So that is what uh, we predict as well as what we see in the market. So there are many concepts around that I will go through uh, in detail during uh, this session. So this uh, personality contains with many attributes. Some of the attributes are never changing. As an example, your DNA, your blood group, your fingerprints, those things are never changing. And there are rarely changing attributes as well, like uh, your name. Sometimes people change their name. Uh, I think in the uh, athletic world, you will see people take different type of names time to time. And then the uh, uh, nationality, like uh, somebody can migrate to a different country, so based on uh, that, their nationality can change. And religion, any, anybody can take any religion at any time, as well as in the modern world, the gender can change uh, really as well. Then there are other attributes like um, frequently changing, like your location, uh, age, social status, so and so forth. Those type of attributes are uh, frequently changing, and there are rapidly changing attributes as well, like your social media interaction, interactions, as well as the things that you buy, heart rates, uh, what type of music you are listening, those type of things are rapidly changing. So that's how these attributes are associated to a person and um, looking, uh, working as an attribute cloud around the individual. So this, uh, so now we talk about the identity and we talk about the personality. So there should be a way to connect these two uh, concepts. So that's where the uh, concept of the digital double coming into the picture. So how you define the digital double basically, it's a fusion of your identity and the personality. There are multiple uh, parallels to digital double. I think you might have heard about digital twin. I think there was a keynote on the first day that spoke about the digital twin and there's another concept called digital digital self, um, so those are some parallels. And digital double, something that we coined in 2016 by uh, looking at the uh, digital ecosystems as well as how we can represent a person inside the digital world. So that is the basic definition of the digital double. I think there's a problem on the text, sorry about that. So that top part says the digital double. I don't know what something happened with PowerPoint. Uh, so basically it uh, uh, representation of multiple things, representation of people, places, and things in the digital universe is what we call as the digital double. So there are a bunch of attributes associated with the digital double, so I'll go in detail. Um, uh, and uh, explain it to you. So the best way to understand the digital bubble, if you have not watched this movie called Tron Legacy, I think it released around in 2012, 2011, I believe. Yeah, so if you have not watched this, watch. Uh, there are two characters called um, Sam Flynn and Kevin Flynn, and basically Kevin loses his uh, identity 
uh, inside the digital world and his son Sam tried to escape him. It's a nice story and uh, to get a, a clear understanding from a real world example, this is the best way. If you have not watched it, go and watch. It's a really nice movie which explains about uh, the uh, digital double. And another capability of the digital double or a characteristic of the digital double basically, it's always active inside the digital spaces. Even when you are taking a nap, if you are sleeping, or if you are watching TV, your digital double might be active. So that's where security is a really important component of this digital double uh, as well. And then the, um, it connects like physical and digital stuff. Um, and uh, best example is uh, physical to digital is um, when you are using a kiosk or when you are uh, accessing a, a, a mobile device. So that's where a physical digital interactions are happening. And then there are digital physical, physical mashups. Uh, a best example for a digital physical mashup is uh, Amazon, Amazon Dash that buttons that you get. So that's a digital physical mashup. And then there are digital to digital. Uh, still, I don't think uh, we see much digital to digital experiences. Uh, one example, if it's Alexa is talking to Siri, that's kind of a digital to digital experience. And in future, it can happen as well. So those are some capabilities and characteristic of the digital double. Then the uh, it takes, uh, it, uh, takes decisions on behalf of you. That's another uh, uh, capability of the digital double. So uh, uh, a real world example for that is uh, the dating application. So if you create a profile inside a dating application, uh, then uh, this, uh, uh, your digital double will start dating with people inside the digital world. So even um, like you will not know, it will date uh, different people. As a result, you will lose your first date because uh, the matching will happen based on your profile and other people's profile. So that is another uh, thing happening with the digital double as well as inside these digital ecosystems. But uh, the fundamentals of security is still there. It will have the privacy, confidentiality, trust, security controls, all these type of primary uh, security capabilities are associated with the digital double. So if somebody thinks that um, um, it will kind of uh, operate in a free way inside the ecosystem, that's not true. Um, it's basically associated with all these fundamental security features. And when you are implementing uh, these systems, you have to pay attention to all these fundamental stuff that comes in your security cookbooks. So the, uh, another thing is about uh, the heliocentric nature of the digital double. So uh, initially, most of the identities were geocentric. Identity managed, created by a provider, but uh, in this world, it is managed, created by an individual. So that's where a person can provide the consents that he or she would like to uh, give for the provider based on their desire. And then it's adaptive based on the various things happening in the, um, that particular ecosystem, it will adapt to those changes. And then it's uh, interoperable as well, because uh, as a person or a thing, we don't have a single identity at the moment. The identity is distributed across many systems, so it has to be interoperable from one system to another. And then it's decentralized. That's where the identity fabrics, identity measures, all these concepts are coming, uh, especially with uh, Web3.0. So identity is decentralized as well. So these type of capabilities are associated with the digital double. So how you define it? There are many ways. So one way is uh, using uh, standards like DID. It's getting very popular, especially with Web3.0, how you associate uh, these attributes to an identity and have a way to store it. But there are many other standards, and this is one standard I um, found that might be useful when you implement uh, this uh, concept. So uh, how CIM related to this, basically CIM creates a foundation 
because now we already have the identity inside CIAM system, so that is the best place to bring the, uh, the, the personality into the uh, ecosystem by connecting these two. That's where we find a relation between uh, the CIAM and the digital double um, as well. So these are the capabilities that we think the CIAM provider should provide to have a healthy digital double as well as the personalization around that. First thing is it has to provide the basic uh, authorization, authentication, and any other security related standards, and it has to keep on improving that part. Uh, addition to that, the CIAM system should provide two sets of APIs. One set of API to capture the attributes associated for that particular person, as well as the interaction this person is doing inside the digital ecosystem. So those are the um, APIs that uh, capture this data. Again, uh, from the other side, the CIAM sh system should provide APIs for the application developers to uh, extract this personalization information. Uh, not only um, like uh, request response type of APIs, it has to be real time APIs like uh, publish and subscribe that whenever there's an event or an activity happening, it has to automatically inform the application layer that these changes are happening. So that's where uh, those kind of APIs are really uh, useful. And then the system has to listen uh, what's really happening and then observe these uh, interactions as well as transactions this person doing and capture data as much as possible. But it's depending on the uh, consent provided by the individual. So there's a trade-off there. So if I uh, provide more and more um, uh, flexibility for my provider to capture my information, uh, I will get uh, more and more um, um, uh, personalization experience from the system. If I give less access, then I will get less, uh, less uh, uh, personalized experience as well. So it's totally depending on how the individual will uh, provide these uh, consents. I think uh, it depends on the region, especially regions like Europe, uh, there are a lot of uh, um, uh, regulation, so based on that, they have to decide what are the consents this, um, uh, the uh, uh, individual can provide for the provider. And then uh, the uh, 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 artificial intelligence, machine learning, those type of capabilities can utilize because now you have a, a rich data set of attributes uh, captured and associated with the identity, so you can utilize those capabilities with uh, the um, CIAM system. So if you look at it from an architecture point of view, this is a reference architecture uh, we have identified. You will see the uh, usual application layer and uh, currently it's distributed and then you will have the mesh inside that like service meshes, data meshes, so and so forth and application layer will be there. Then the CIAM provider will come and provide that uh, the basic um, CIM capabilities plus addition to that now you have a data lake with the personalization information. That doesn't mean we are duplicating the data that already stored in the system of record layers like CRM systems, marketing databases and um, uh, customer journey mapping systems. Those things will remain inside the system of record layer but um, additional attributes and certain information required to extract those attributes as well as augment those attributes will be stored inside the CIAM system. And as you can see, there will be an API exposed for the application layer for them to um, uh, get those attributes and associate them inside the applications that they develop. So this is a, a reference architecture, but then again, depending on your enterprise architecture as well as application architecture, it can differ and use within your organization. <coughs> so, but uh, there should be a step-by-step -step approach to achieve this. Uh, so that's where uh, this uh, different type of maturity levels that we have identified, starting from 1.0, that 
basically provide the basic access management stuff and then 2.0, the level 2.0 basically getting the identity, um, integrated identities to the business. That's where most of these B2B uh, type of use cases are coming. And then the uh, extended level called the 3.0 level, that's where the personalization will associated with the identity and provide this personalized information for the business and business can start utilizing personalization information for their benefit. So as a technology provider, we have done some contribution as well. So we had a booth, unfortunately, I think the trading flow is no more there. Uh, so uh, we had a bunch of demonstrations about this concept as well. Since it's no more there, I'll explain a little bit on what we are providing as a technology provider. First thing is we have but define a maturity model. If you are in this journey, how you can go step by step, it's a uh, five step uh, maturity model. And following this uh, maturity model, you can go step by step and then achieve the level five. Uh, so if you want to read more about that, uh, I have put the URL down. Uh, you can go there and then read about uh, this in detail. Not only a maturity model, we have uh, provided, uh, we are providing these capabilities through the products that we have released, the main thing, uh, main product called Asgardio. Uh, you can go to that particular URL and create an account and access uh, Asgardio. And we are in the process of bringing all these different level of CIM capabilities through uh, the Asgardio product. And integration is an essential part for uh, the CIM, so that's where our uh, the, the casino of Escario that's called Corio uh, coming into the picture and helping uh, each and every, uh, I think uh, the both layers uh, together. So the, in summary, uh, these are the things like first thing is the uh, personalization is the DNA of the experience economy and um, the uh, uh, so the uh, digital double is the core concept that you can associate identity and the personality and the foundation to create this digital double as well as provide the personality and identity uh, we coming through the CIM providers and the, uh, uh, the CIM provider creates as well as manage the digital double in the current context as well as in the future. And uh, there's a CIM maturity model. If you are in this particular journey, how you can uh, go step by step. And as a technology provider, uh, we provide these capabilities through uh, the SaaS product that we have built called Asgardio. And uh, if you are interested, you can go there and uh, find more information. So if you would like to have a detailed discussion, these are my contact details. So uh, you can connect. Uh, and if you would like to have a, um, a detailed conversation, then we provide strategic consulting as well. And uh, you can connect with me through LinkedIn. And I'm really active uh, on t Twitter as well. Uh, so uh, feel free to contact and would like to have a, a detailed discussion as well as continue. Uh, this uh, concept in detail as well. So since uh, uh, we almost hit the time, um, uh, thank you. And uh, if you have any question, uh, you can uh, answer, ask it now. I'm happy to answer, or uh, you can contact me through these contact details as well. Thank you. Thank you.